What up, this is Rama Screen, covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Netflix new series, The Last Kids on Earth. Hey, before you watch this review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you would like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. First up, I would like to say thank you to Netflix for granting me the first episode of this new series, which I will be reviewing here. By the way, The Last Kids on Earth will premiere on Netflix as a 66-minute special based on book one on September 17th, and then a series based on book two will follow in 2020. So it's kind of cool, right? And it's not like every day a show like that arrives in such a unique format with the first one being an hour long. And because of that, it does feel like you're watching a mini TV movie. The Last Kids on Earth is action-packed, it's thrilling, and it's super fun. It is a downright awesome friendship adventure story. Based on Max Brailler's New York Times best-selling book series, The Last Kids on Earth is about a 13-year-old named Jack Sullivan, and his equally wisecracking band of suburban middle schooler friends who live in a decked out treehouse living their carefree lives while battling zombies and giant sized monsters in the aftermath of the monster apocalypse. You've all seen shows about zombies and you've seen movies about kaijus, but to have a TV series like this that features both kaijus and zombies now that is what separates the last kids on Earth from the rest. By the way, what you need to understand about the lead character, Jack Sullivan, is that he's an orphan who, growing up, bounces from one foster family to the next, many of whom don't give a damn about him. So that's where the emotional moments of this show would occasionally come in. From Jack's longing to be part of a family, no matter how unconventional they may seem. But that sadness does not keep Jack from being optimistic and goofy and positive and crazy obsessed about movies and comic books and video games and with proving himself to be the hero who rescues his crush, June Del Toro. This show, or should I say this 66 minute special, is full of energy there's never really a downtime. And this little friendship forged between Jack, Quint, Dirk, June, and their silly dog Rover will resonate with fans of The Goonies, Stand By Me, and even Stranger Things. And there's something sweet and endearing and delightful about it too, especially when a bully like Dirk realizes that he doesn't give his new weird nerd friends enough credit. Or when June realizes that she doesn't have to be defensive all the time, that she can let her guard down, and even though they may look like they're enjoying their new home at the tree house, deep down you can tell that they kinda do miss their parents or some hint of adult supervision. In this 66 minute special, there is a particular kaiju who kind of holds a grudge on Jack. This kaiju just keeps popping up relentlessly. He becomes like this episode's main villain, which forces Jack, Quint, Dirk, and June to put their skills together and work as a team to defeat him. I think the 2D animation style looks cool. Some of it kind of pays homage to Japan's anime, and some of it applies that slow-mo bullet time method featured in a lot of action movies today. Sure, it's mostly targeted towards younger audiences. And I think grown-ups or adult audiences who are not too critical about things would find it mildly funny as well. Hell, I for one enjoy it. Quint is like a small MacGyver. He creates these wild, custom, multifunctional gadgets that come at you unexpectedly and allow for our four friends to have the upper hand. Yes, the story does continue, but this first 66 minute episode comes out confident, like it can pass as a pretty good standalone. You will see some of the gnarliest, creative looking zombies ever, and even the kaijus have their various personalities, all of which are well described by Jack in his own enthusiastic way. Also featuring the voice talents of some very famous people including Mark Hamill, 
Bruce Campbell, Catherine O'Hara, and Rosario Dawson. The Last Kids on Earth is a vibrant, new, exciting post-apocalyptic show that should not be overlooked.